Hi everybody, this is John from OneHourAcademy.com taking you through part 3 of our jQuery tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to cover advanced ways to use jQuery selectors to talk to things on your web page. In my previous video I talked about using class and ID and regular tag selectors, but there's a lot more to the story and there's a few more advanced things that I want to cover with you in this video. So one of the first things I want to talk about is using things like even, odd, less than, greater than, or equals to. So if you've got a group of items like list items, for example, and you want to talk to only some of them at any given time, you can refer to them like this. Every other one, odd or even, every one before or after a place in the list using less than or greater than, or one or more exact locations using equals. Here's some examples. So li even dot css background color tan, that's going to stripe the list so that every other one has a tan background color. Ligt3 dot css, this is going to address all list items after item number three and make their text color red. Lieq2 or Lieq4 dot hide is going to hide both items two and four of my list using a, a comma to separate the two uh, different uh, expressions here. Okay, so we can also look for tags within tags. Suppose you only wanted to talk to list items that were within a specific unordered list with an ID of main list. So if we went pound sign or hashtag main list li dot fade out slow, this is only going to address the list items that were within a UL tag that has an ID of main list. So you'd put the UL ID equals main list before the list items, and then um, only those list items that are within this ID of main list will apply to this fade out command. There's also the contains filter. So this is going to isolate any type of tag that contains a specific word or words. I find this one particularly useful. So for example, say I had a bunch of paragraphs and I only wanted to isolate those paragraphs that have the phrase pizza pie in them. So I could surround the entire expression with double quotes because I'm also using single quotes to enter my what we call my search string here. So this basically means any paragraph that contains the phrase pizza pie, we're going to apply a, a CSS coloring of red. So it'll turn all the paragraphs red that have this phrase in them, but only those paragraphs, not any other ones. So that's what this says here. This will find all paragraphs that contain the phrase pizza pie and turn them red. There's also the not selector, which is also really handy. So anything you're looking for, if you decide you want the opposite of that, you can wrap that entire thing in, inside of a not selector to get the opposite. So for example, um, li dot not li equals three dot hide basically means hide everything but item three in the list. On its own, this is looking for only item three, but we wrap that inside of a not to get the opposite, which means everything except for item three. Very tricky. This is my last thing. Collections and the dot each command. So if you wanted to take a collection of objects and store them into a separate variable, you can do that and then use dot each to talk to each item separately. This one's a little bit of a weird example, but let me walk this one through with you. So say I went like this, var dollar sign items equals li lt3. What that does is it's going to store all the list items before item three and then run the do it function with each one. Okay, so after this line of code, items now represents all list items before the third one. So this is basically a collection of list items, literally objects on your page. And then on the next line, we're saying, okay, with that collection, each item, I want to run this function called do it. So over here in the side box, I've got the do it function, and basically it's going to append the text added with JQ to each list item. Okay, and this keyword this, refers to any given item that's calling this function at any given time. So all the list items less than three will all run this function. And as each one takes its turn, each one of them is going to be referred to as this. So this just refers to any given item that's running the function at that time. All right, that is a lot for one lesson. I realize that. 
um, but believe it or not there's even more advanced ways that you can select things on your web page but this will be enough to get you started remember this is trying to be a one hour course and uh, to get that much more detail on selectors you'd have to spend a lot more time than just one hour just on this one topic we've got many more videos coming that talk about other things as well but in the meantime if you really want to dive into the topic of jQuery selectors um, you can go right to their website because they've got all of the documentation right here at api.jquery.com and you're going to look under category selectors and you'll find the ones I've covered plus a lot lot more alright so that's it for the theory but we're not quite done yet this doesn't really make a lot of sense unless we try it for real so I'm gonna open up Aptana Studio here and here is a jQuery ready page I got this ready ahead of time before the video just to save some time if you're not familiar with how I set up my jQuery I invite you to watch one of my earlier videos in the series where I talk about how I set up my jQuery ready page but here's my jQuery ready page and for this to work I need some content in the body so I'm gonna just quickly add two separate lists and this will take me just a moment to do and you can follow along or you can pause it and try this on your own but what I basically need is UL to create an unordered list and I'm assuming you know what a UL and a LI tag is uh, so I'm just gonna go LI and slash LI and I'm gonna go this is item zero one of the things I forgot to mention is that when it counts list items as odd or even or less than three greater than four whatever they start counting at zero so if I actually put this in here and I'm gonna create a bunch of these and I'm just gonna start from the top here and I'm gonna change this to one two three four five six seven eight and I need one more to get to nine now I actually have 10 items but because I'm starting at zero nine is my tenth item all right and I'm gonna add one more list only with four additional items so I'm just gonna copy that control C and come down here and paste control V now even though we're in a separate list here one thing you should know is that um, jQuery keeps the counting going so this is item 10 even though it's in a separate list and 11 and 12 and 13 okay so there's my basic web page that I'm gonna play around with and I'm gonna use some of those selectors that I've covered in the previous uh, example on the PowerPoint there to explain this in action if I save this right now and I push play there's not much to look at just two separate lists I might want to add a paragraph on top of this one and say this is my first list and I'll do the same thing down here another paragraph this is my second list okay so there's my two paragraphs um, I push play again and there we go alright so let's get started up here in the startup function I want to address all the even numbered list items so I'm gonna go like this dollar sign li so that covers all of my list items and I'm gonna go even okay so that's gonna filter out just the even and then I'm going to maybe apply a simple CSA and this one is going to be for the background dash color okay and I'm going to apply tan as the background color so this should work just fine I'll just push play and you can see the even numbered ones even in the second list get applied to this styling okay and then odd works the same way if I want to put odd I'd get the odd numbers let me try a greater than so I'm gonna say everything greater than uh, seven gets the background color tan so that's gonna start at list item eight and go all the way down from there so I'll push play and you can see everything after seven gets the tan color what about equals let's isolate three separate individual specific list items so if I go li eq to two and then I separate that with a comma and go li EQ uh, say 8 okay so I'll just isolate those two and if I push play only 2 and 8 have that background styling okay so those are the basic less than greater than equal to and so on also in the PowerPoint presentation um, let me just go back here for a second you'll notice that we talked about tags within tags okay so know, knowing that I've got two lists 
If I apply the fade out command to the entire thing, all of my list items will fade out. So I'll just show you that really quickly. So if I just take all of this out, and I'm just going to go like this, li dot fade out, um, and I'll use uh, slow. Okay, so because I'm talking to all of my list items, when I push play, everything fades out, and then the two paragraphs collapse on top of each other. Now what if I just wanted the first list to fade out? Well what I can do is I can target it by going up to its container, which is the UL tag, and I can give it an ID of maybe top or something along those lines. Okay, so then I gotta be more specific up here and I gotta say hashtag top. So now I'm saying only the allies that are part of the top ID do I want to fade out. So if I push play on that, and you can see only the top list fades out and then when it's done the second list kind of collapse is itself up on top of the where the first list used to be next I want to talk about the contains filter so for this particular one I'm gonna have to go to a few list items here and I'm gonna randomly put some text in here that I can use to filter out later so I'm gonna use the exact example that I had in my slideshow so I'm gonna put the word pizza pie and it doesn't matter where in the list it goes um, as long as it can find it in there somewhere. So pizza pie and I'll do one more down here um, just at the beginning of this list here. Okay so I just randomly put the phrase pizza pie into three items. So if I wanted to go through my list and find only those list items that contain a specific phrase like that I can come up here and I can do the following. I can type the following. Li and I'm going to put this in double quotes because the thing I'm looking for also has to go into quotes and I need to use single quotes for the term pizza pie. So I'm going to continue with contains. Okay, and then in here, in single quotes, I'm going to put pizza pie. Okay, and that basically gets a hold of all of the list items that have the word pizza pie in them. And I'm going to just do my usual which is to apply a CSS styling of color red. For some reason red reminds me of pizza. And that should take care of that. So if I save it and I play it, you'll see that only the items with have, with have pizza pie in them are turned red. And it doesn't matter where pizza pie is in the phrase. As long as it's in there somewhere, it can find it. So now I'm going to get a little bit fancier and I'm going to use a variable to represent all the list items that contain pizza pie. So let me just get rid of this piece here. And I'm going to go to the front of the line here and I'm going to go var dollar sign pizza equals. Okay, so now pizza represents all list items that contain pizza pie. So on the next line, instead of hiding those items using that long expression, I can just go pizza.hide and you will no longer see the items that have pizza pie. Okay, so they're gone. All I've got left are the regular items. Now if I want to show only the pizza pie items, and I can use my pizza variable to do that as well. Okay, so I can go to the front here and I can go like this, dollar sign li dot not dollar sign pizza dot hide. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying all list items that are not the pizza items because pizza items are represented by this expression up here. So now I'm going to hide the opposite. So if I save that, I'll see only the pizza items. And there they are, the different items that have pizza in them. Pretty cool. Okay, now with that collection, so I've got dollar sign pizza that represents three items that all have the word pizza in it. I can run a function on each of those using the each expression. So I can go like this, dollar sign pizza. So now I'm talking to all the pizza items, dot each. And I'm going to create a function here called do it. OK, so what's going to happen is another function called do it will get called for each pizza item. So if I come down below and I add the function do it, OK? Um, to refer to each item as it comes down through this function, I use the word this. Okay, and that refers to each of the pizza items. So, um, 
let me put the CSS back in to make them red first of all. CSS color red. Okay, and while I'm here, I will do one more thing. I will go dot append, and I'm going to just add the phrase, I like pizza. Okay, so what it's going to do with each list item that has pizza in it, it's going to apply a red color, and it's going to append the words, I like pizza, to the end of each of those list items. So I'll save that and you can see what happens when I run it. Okay, so everything is red, thanks to the do it function, and I like pizza has been added as well. So if I take away the hide command right here, we can see all of the list items again, and you can see that each one of them that has pizza in the list item still has this do it function that runs. Okay, so I'll just play that one more time. Now you can see the entire list, including the pizza items which have had the do it function run on them, and everything else is restored to to what it was before. So that's it for jQuery selectors and like I said before that's a lot for one lesson. So take your time going through this, rewind it if you have to and go through a few of these concepts on your own to make sure you really understand them and I think we're ready for the next video once I get it published which will talk about uh, jQuery events that's coming up in the next part of the series. Uh, this is John again from OneHourAcademy.com thanking you for watching and please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and uh, let anybody know who's interested in learning more about jQuery um, that I've got a nice tutorial here for beginners who are just starting out. Thanks, bye for now.